Keep putting that jab on him. Uh, check his temperature with the jab. Go ahead, put that thermometer in his mouth. Go ahead, touch his jab. You got to pat him down. When you're on the inside, you got to pat him down. Touch the body all over. Pat him down. Get hit with unnecessary shots. You already ate. Boxing First Law back in the building. Hit you with another one, too. Shout out to C Still Boxing for that post. And my guy, G5 Just TV. Recognizing that's the OG, man. And that's how I break this sport now. Anyway, man, I wanted to hit you in your mouth with some boxing news. Pat you down to the body with some boxing topics. Try to make sure I don't get hit you with no unnecessary shots. Anyway, as you can see on the screen, we got Layla Ali. She in these boxing streets shooting her one, two around. And, um... I, I read the article, interesting read, um, honest breakdown, I thought, as far as the flattery she was giving out to Katie Taylor, flattery she was giving out to Savannah Marshall, not so much on the uh, Fracone, uh, Cedar Royas fight, Cedar Royas, Cedar fight. I, I can't get that whole name. I don't want to keep brutalizing these uh, fighters names like that. But she she I don't know. She she didn't give a lean in the Soriano fight. She didn't give a lean in, in the uh, Franchon fight. She was kind of just saying she don't think that Clarissa Shields can deal with Sarah Marshall. I, I'm like, you, you you had a lot to say, but you only had shade and cap towards uh, Shields. And she also spoke on the fight that didn't happen with Ann Wolf, saying they both did want to fight back in the day. And she added that she didn't think Ann Wolf could have dealt, dealt with her boxing ability along with the power that she brought to the ring. She said Ann Wolf was one dimensional and had nothing else going on. So the article was half flattery and half cap. And I, I, I think the champ is bigger and better than that, man. So hopefully, uh, you know, the shade don't continue to go back and forth between these female uh, legends and these current fighters. Let's tap into the boxing hot topics part of this video. And it's going to be Deontay Wilder talk, man. They, people still thinking he coming back. Jose Suleiman, I mean, excuse me, Mauricio Suleiman saying he's still ranked number one and he believes he'll fight sometime this year against who we don't know. We, we've we heard Tyson Fury thinks Deontay Wilder should get his belt back, so to speak. Uh, I, I mean, it's just an interesting scenario. Deontay Wilder, per se, lately hasn't been commenting. You know, last word from him, I believe he had to go take a wilderness trip to get his mind right or whatever like that but a lot of fighters kind of have to take a step back from the sport especially if you went through what he went through in that trilogy that was just a war fested scenario going on between the, the uh them two guys so he might need a mental break he might need a physical break so will we see him i don't know that's why i think it's still a hot topic it just you know he he's still a fan friendly guy you know what i mean he still has a lot of support in these boxer streets and he still got somewhat youth on his side, too. So we don't know what he's feeling spiritually and mentally. But I do think he could become the heavyweight champ again with the landscape the way it is. You know what I mean? Anyway, man, last bit of boxing news that I wanted to share with you is about my guy, Manuel Tagu, and some of the flack that he's getting back at home in Ghana. Uh, a couple of the OGs, the veterans, didn't like the performance they thought it was a money grab and that is azuma nelson the professor you know solid vet solid hall of famer so when you speak you when they speak you kind of you know want to give them your ear and, and and you know i mean give them you know give them a second to explain themselves and i kind of get where he's coming from because these guys they didn't get the paydays that these modern fighters get so they were fighting to actually fight but in defense of my guy Tagu against Ike Corte and uh, Zuma Nelson, I would say, man, you had to see the matchup, bro. That was that was just it wasn't right. He he physically couldn't be effective and be defensively sound at the same time. You saying he went in there to get a bag. I don't think he went in there to get knocked out to get that bag. So, I mean, you got to kind of, you know, realize, you know, listen to them, take take in consideration what they're saying. But also you you have to be able to look at it from the other side of the street, too. So, you know, the, the fans and the people in his hometown or his home country, they gave him a lot of love when he came back home. So, I mean, the flack, 
I guess it comes with the territory, but these again, I think it could be coming from these two vets that didn't receive the bag that these modern fighters are receiving. And then again, Emmanuel Tagu's late to receiving that bag. He 30 some odd fights in the game before he really gets on these main stages. Anyway, box the first vlog, hitting you with the one, two. Tell me how you feel in that comment section.